Guys, today we are continuing our art talks. Um, as you know, I already interviewed some amazing artists during self-isolation. And uh, today we are continuing our conversations because the goal is to stay in touch with art professionals from all over the world to know what's going on in the industry and how we can cope and uh, we can share the experience in this new, fast-changing world. And um, today we will have a very special guest. Should I tell you who it, who it is? <laughs> it is one of my favorite artists and the sculptor, Lorenzo Queen. He's a great Italian sculptor who is famous for his monumental public art and also some smaller pieces which transmit his passion for eternal values and authentic emotions. His sculptures with human hands have become signature ones and um, his other iconic works are related to our beautiful planet. Okay, so let's try now and we'll connect to Lorenzo. Let's see if he's here. Okay. We are trying to connect to Lorenzo Queen. Let's see. Yeah. I think it's going to work. Iraq. Hello, Iraq. <laughs> Hello! Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Yes, connected. We are connected. Uh, we are connected. Yeah, they can see some fabulous sculpture of yours uh, behind you. <laughs> it's like there's two hands just holding your head. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So yeah, this is um, in... Finally, I get a chance to talk to you. We've been trying for a long time. Yes. How are you? How is everything? I'm good. I'm in London. As I understand, you were in Spain. Yes, I live in uh, I live in Spain. So I've been living out uh, COVID uh, uh, nineteen here in uh, Spain with my family. But actually, I've uh, I've been lucky. I've uh, we're all okay. All our family members are okay, and friends are okay. Uh, but you know, it's a, it's a strange moment. It's a very difficult moment. At the same time, it's a, it's a unifying moment because all over the world, everybody's going through the same thing. Unfortunately, some people, uh, have had it a lot worse than us. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to them and their, and their families, mm -hmm. uh, creatively, it's been, um, very interesting. I've actually created a lot of work. Uh, so you made some new pieces. Uh, Love you, holding each other up, love yourself. It's yeah. all about love. I feel like that's what we need uh, in this difficult moment. Well, I think art needs to spread a, a message, you know, a, mess, a unifying message of, uh, of love. Uh, the, the hands behind me, by the way, are, are, have been inspired by the unfortunate events uh, that took place in the U.S. with uh, George Floyd's uh, death. So is that your new artwork? It's, uh, I have uh, repainted uh, mm -hmm. one of the pair of hands that I did for Building Bridges. Building Bridges were six pair of hands. The, I think those one, I saw those you one. You saw in, them in, yeah, you saw them in Venice. 
Yeah, so big. Yeah, so these are the smaller ones that were for the interior. Uh, in fact, I was going to set them up in my studio. Let me show you. I was yes. going to... Wait. Oh my God, they're actually not so small. They're big. They're big. Yeah, I'm going to set them up in my studio, but because of COVID-19... By the way, you want me to walk you around my studio? Oh, a little bit? Fabulous, yes. Okay, so this is like the the area, the exhibition area, which right now is, of course, uh, no visitors can come yet. So we're uh, taking advantage and reassembling the whole exhibition. That's my action, speak louder than words, love. Yes. This is the force of okay. nature. Uh, oh. Here hey. is, uh, I will catch you if you fall. That is finding love. Uh, here you have a re small reproductions of the hands, the first hands I did in Venice, that is. Called, called support. Mm -hmm. so I now have to make this wall look like uh, uh, Hotel Casagredo. So this is the exhibition space. My office is up there in that window. That's the office. And then there are other offices there. This is the actual sculpting area. This is the sculpt area. Oh, ah, that's so impressive. So now I have um, a big force of nature. She's nine meters tall. We're ah. working. We're working on her. So this is clay, or uh, tell us. Yeah, well, it's a combination of material. So the details, I do it with uh, plastilina. I do the it is, This is the smaller one. This is the original version. Yeah. So it's a reproduction of this one. Idea now. Ah, uh, there it is. So, because it's so big, I use. I have to combine materials. So I use styrofoam for the smoother parts that don't have um, details, and for the detail parts, I have. I I make the plastilina. That's the give out there, the one with. Yeah, with the tree. The, with the tree. Yes, the olive tree, giving, giving life. Uh, this was in Miami. I brought it back here. Now I'm going to change it. I'm going to put a, a brush in it. And I'm going to write on that wall. I'm going to write, what is art? So. So we're wearing Spain is this? I, I think, yeah, you're connected. It's actually a place called Gava, just outside Barcelona. That's pretty spectacular. So, so how does it start? For, so first, the idea, of course. Then you make a sketch, right? Well, yes. First, it's uh, the idea. It's, uh, and the idea is, is really everything. So it, it's about what... You know, don't yeah, want to talk about is a little bit. the environment. So depending on what I want to talk about, I, I start thinking about what I want to say about that subject matter. And so I'll usually mm -hmm. write down a few uh, words. I'll write down a few words. And based on the words, then, sorry, let me just put this down. Uh, so based on the words, I will then... Um, here, maybe you see me better here. Okay. Based on the words, mm -hmm. I will yeah. then uh, like draw, uh, get some inspiration uh, from the adjectives that I wrote down. And then I'll make a little drawing. Mm -hmm. And after the drawing, then I'll make uh, probably, I usually make a little maquette of the sculpture to see if it works. Uh, and then depending on what, I'm, what I've decided and what I've created, if it's very, very big, uh, I work on the small one, then we, we scan it and then we make it big with, uh, we, we print it big. And then as you saw, I do, I make all the details. And if it's a small piece like this one, uh, then I usually sculpt uh, directly. This is the, the one I was telling you about before. I think holding each other up. Yeah. Holding each other up. And as you see, this piece, wait, let me put it here. 
Let me show you. So is it also going to be a big one, a bigger version? They fall. If they're not attached to each other, they fall. But as in any relationship, you, you hold each other up, basically. And the final version will be in bronze, correct? The final version will be bronze or will be aluminum or will be stainless steel. I usually do various uh, versions of the uh, same piece. So you do that also in Spain, you produce? Yeah, I do that in Spain. My gallery, Halcyon Gallery, they're in London. Yep. So go to London uh, all the time. Uh, they're on New Bond Street and actually in Harrods as well. They also have a, a very big space in, uh, in China, in mm -hmm. Shanghai, in Pudong. So we kind of that way cover an international market. So yeah, the creative part is done here. Uh, and, uh, and I guess the, 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 the sales and uh, viewing is done in, um, in London. Yeah. So most of like, lots of your works are public art located in important parks and cultural centers. And during quarantine, people and us public didn't have an opportunity to enjoy it. And focus of the society has shifted from interpersonal relations to economics and healthcare. So in your opinion, how the social trends will, uh, the, so the perception of art will change uh, afterwards, like it... Well, you know, it's interesting because um, a lot of people have actually, in moments of crisis, a lot of people actually turn to art. Interestingly enough, um, from an economic standpoint, uh, during the last uh, recession, the art market actually went up. Mm -hmm. um, because aside from they didn't know where, where to put their money. The other thing is that art at least gives you comfort. Yep. Um, and it's something that makes you feel good when, mm -hmm. you, when you have it. Uh, and it also has a market, a true market value, you know, uh, depending on what you get. Um, the interesting thing is because people had to stay at home, I saw a lot more creativity during this time. Correct. Because we live in a very fast-paced world. Mm -hmm. and we're always running around like crazy. I travel, I, last year I traveled, uh, I think 230 days, 240 days. Um, so yeah, my creative time was on, on planes, you know? Um, but now I've been able to be at home uh, for the past uh, basically uh, three months. Did you find yourself creating more during this time when you are not traveling? Do you have more time? Yeah, I think any moment that is um, any moment that carries a very strong energy with it, and this one did, whether it was positive or negative. Um, this is a very important moment in history, mm -hmm. and of course, you have to feel it. You feel this sensation. You feel this vibration. Um, so I have been able to, yes, I mean, I have been able to exteriorize it through my art. Um, mm -hmm. and I've been lucky. Uh, many people, sometimes, you know, people get overwhelmed by emotions and they can't actually create because there's just so much going on in their mind. Uh, I have learned to channel my emotions into mm -hmm. my art. So I've, I've been, I've been quite lucky. So it's, it means it's inspired you even better? Yeah, it inspired me. It has inspired me. It has inspired me. But, uh, it, one, of the, one of the worst parts about being an artist, at least for me, is because my art uh, always has to carry a meaning. And, yep. um, you know, sometimes I don't know what I want to talk about. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm at a loss for thoughts and for uh, messages. Uh, although there's so many out there that you can talk about, of course, because you could talk about the environment. Uh, you yeah. could talk about love in many different ways. You could talk about so, much, so many beautiful things. Mm 
mm-hmm. and meaningful things. But deciding which one you want, which subject matter you want to choose sometimes is quite challenging. And even though you've decided it, uh, now you have to materialize it. So how am I going to show this message uh, through my art? Um, so sometimes the inspiration uh, leaves you. Mm-hmm. And you don't know when it's going to come back. It's like, uh, um, it's like a tidal wave, you know, when you're, when you're out and you, the tide goes out. And, uh, and you're like, is it ever going to come back? And uh, then there's a, a rush, a rush of creativity. You know, that tidal wave of rush comes back, back and it's like Bye. pushing you to create and to do things. So, yeah, I think that in this, in this moment, um, I, I was able to turn the negativity into something uh, positive. Amazing. But tell me, how did your creative pro process changed during this time i noticed on instagram you posted you start using uh virtual models instead of yeah. live, instead of a traditional that was uh, that was very interesting it, it at first it sounded it sounded a little a little strange because um uh, i always uh like to work with models live of course and i always like to do it uh, a, in an environment that's uh, respectful and safe for the model herself. So I'm doing it usually. Uh, I have a lot of people in the office and I have a lot of people going around the studio. So it's usually when there's a lot of people here. To so, and this was a little weird because it was like, a, it looked like a voyeurism call. You know, it's like, hey, you know, are you willing to, <laughs> to undress for the camera? You know, that was weird. <laughs> but... Uh, but we, you know, we were working together for a while, so there was a, there was a good re- uh, relationship and confidence in that, and so it was it was okay. But at first, it was a little strange. But you know, listen, I'm I'm also like to if I can to help out, and I know that um, in a moment like this, especially if you're a model, you're not getting modeling jobs because you can't go to your jobs. So if I can help by asking you to model virtually. At least, uh, you know, you can also earn something on the side. It's, it's good. But are you going to continue this virtual modeling in the future once the lockdown? Well, I mean, um, I act, I, that I didn't think about. Um, I think you should make but some... But now I know that there's a possibility. Wearing the mask. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, now at least I know there is a possibility to do that, which is something I didn't know before and I didn't think about before. Uh, but now I know that there is a possibility that I can work... Uh, virtually uh, with a model. Obviously, it's not the same. You know, the lighting uh, yeah. uh, is not the same. And, uh, but uh, it can be done. Also, it's not the same for a very simple reason. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I take measurements. I, take, I have calipers. And so if I'm working like on a, a, a scale uh, sculpture, like on a one to two or a one to three, uh, mm-hmm. I need to take measurements with the calipers. And uh, of course, if you're live, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. So I think, uh, sorry, if you're on video, you can't do that. So I think that the video will help to uh, advance to a certain point, mm-hmm. but eventually you need to be uh, in person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. But I think with the future, with the te- when technologies will develop even more, I think you will photograph an image and then you can touch it or you can make a video well, eventually yeah eventually i think that you'll be able to scan a person even though the person is not there with you she can be scanned uh, somewhere remotely uh, or he can be scanned somewhere remotely and then of course you work on on the figure listen i believe in technology um uh, leonardo da vinci yeah. was one of the first great believers of technology. I mean, he was the one that actually went out and invented things that didn't exist yet to help him, himself create what he wanted to create. I can just imagine Leonardo uh, alive today. He'd go crazy with all the things he could use and, and everything. We don't have to forget, though, that we can't lose the uh, artistic uh, touch. The artist's touch is still very, very, very important. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know, maybe one day robots will be yep. able to do a job. Maybe. Robots are uh, making paintings and uh, yeah, it's going there. Also, you know, 
I think that also uh, the fact that we're human and that we're not perfect uh, and that we, can't, we don't make the perfect artwork um, is something that's very human about us and I think actually very pleasing to the art, to, to the eye. Um, when, you talk, when you're talking about proportions and when you're talking about aesthetics, you know, nobody is exactly symmetrical. Um, in fact, it's very funny. If you take a photograph of half of your face yeah, and, and, and double it up, you won't recognize yourself. You're like, who is that? You know? Yeah. It, it's <laughs> interesting. So in art, it's the same. So we're, uh, as humans, we're, we're accustomed to a certain aesthetic. And I think that eventually maybe you can teach uh, robots to do that, but I don't know. I I I, I hope not. Do the same. So hopefully not. So we can see a lot of human hands you use in your sculptures. So what's the co what's the concept behind this human body? Why why well, hands? Uh, yeah, I use um, I use hands, and I use of course uh, uh, figures. But essentially, I'm a figurative artist. But one of the reasons I use so many hands is because. Uh, my message is, well, at least I want it to be a universal message. And everybody understands what those hands back there mean. Yeah. I don't have to explain it, right? Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of these other hands that I have around here, uh, I don't have to tell you what they mean. You kind of understand just by the gesture, you understand what they mean. So um, I think that the ability to speak through hands uh, using a universal language, that is what has always been very appealing to me. Um, but of course, I also use full figures. Mm -hmm. I use uh, full figures because um, I am a figurative artist and there are some things that need to go beyond the, the immediate simple message, maybe something that needs to be a little bit uh, deeper uh, and so then I'll use a figure. Also, one of the reasons why I use hands is also because I exhibit in so many countries around the world. And, you know, a lot of countries, you can't show a naked body. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but they have no problem with hands. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of my sculptures in the, in the Middle East, and I respect, you know, all cultures. So I'm okay with that, it's fine. Um, and then you can wear a hand on your wrist, so mm -hmm. that's also why I do uh, hands. So you, you did, did you start a jewelry line or? Yeah, I have a, I have a jewelry line. Um, so I have a lot of my jewels, are, a lot of my sculptures have been turned into jewels. Yeah. That's very interesting. <laughs> this, is the, this is the give and receive. Oh, that's beautiful. That's the gold version. And this is the, this is the rubber version. That's amazing. So where, where can we? buy this bracelet. uh lorenzo queen jewelry com. where else <laughs> well something always something you creative people but it, it, it's easier right. i i want to get the message out to as many people as i can you know the, the message of unity the message of bring let's come together you know um and not everybody can wear you know actually carry a sculpture around right and usually sculptures are either public art, and that's fine because then everybody can see it. But a lot of, of course, most of my art is in private homes. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to spread the message as much as I can. So I think jewelry is a great way to do that because people can carry the message on them. This is the message of giving and receiving. You know, it's, a, it's an important mm -hmm. message. Mm hmm so tell me, what is your next big project, the public art project? Which city, if it is? Uh, I'm very excited because I have uh, two upcoming uh, projects, one in the States and one in, uh, one in Europe, one in Holland. Um, I can actually say where they go and what they are um, because it's, uh, it's of course, it's, it's a secret. But mm -hmm. I can tell you one is gonna one is gonna be a very nice inauguration, uh, public inauguration in October, mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S., and the other one will be in November, in 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 Holland. Mm -hmm. So I was always curious what happens to these big monumental sculptures 
after, for example, uh, what happened in Venice Biennale to uh, building bridges. So it doesn't stay there forever. What what is the afterlife? Of all yeah, this? thank you, thank you for that question. It's, it's a good question. Um, okay, so for example, the first ones that I did uh, in 20, 2017 support the ones that were in the water uh, holding the building. Um, those have been back in Spain. Mm -hmm. And um, the city of Venice, the people have actually had asked to keep them there. Yeah, that would be so amazing. Yeah, but the, the, the local authorities, uh, not the mayor's office, the mayor also wanted them there. Um, but the local art council, uh, because it was a temporary exhibition, they said if it's temporary, it can't be permanent. And so they had them removed. Mm -hmm. uh, people were very upset about that because, you know, it, 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 I think it, it lends itself... And it's okay. You can bring, um, you know, we're we're in twenty, uh, we're in twenty twenty now, and uh, Venice is a very beautiful city. Has to be protected, um, and there's space for modern art. Um, and the Tour Eiffel, as you know, was also temporary, but turned out to be a permanent uh, uh, icon of uh, France. Um, so we're, we're now waiting and hoping that we can bring them back to Venice. So we haven't done anything with them. We've been asked by so many people to bring them here, to bring them there. But we really think that they belong in Venice. So we want to bring them back to Venice. Uh, building bridges, um, the, the building bridges, they're still in Venice. Mm -hmm. But we are now in talks with quite a few uh, governments to move them to uh, other countries. Mm -hmm. So I can't say where yet, but there's, uh, we're pretty advanced in talks to move them um, to other countries. So usually they, they never stay in one place, they travel around the world. If it's an installation, temporary installation, usually, yes, it doesn't. It's for the time that the installation was set for, uh, a month, two months, six months, whatever and then they usually move on. But you know, these things are so massive and so difficult to move. Mm -hmm. So um, people have <laughs> asked- it's, I, I wonder how heavy are they? Well, like listen, I just tell you that the team to assemble it, we had all together, we had uh, almost 300 people. We had 18 tractor trailer trucks. We had uh, six barges, uh, floating barges. So it's a massive operation. So when people ask us, we'd like to have building bridges here, we'd like to have building bridges there, and then we tell them what it's going to cost to bring, they're like, <laughs> okay, okay, maybe, maybe something smaller. <laughs> A smaller version. Yeah. So what is your largest scale public art object? Uh, building bridges is the, is the biggest uh, sculpture that I made to date. Uh, these are the small ones, of course, the ones that are here. Uh, I think that they're uh, one. I think they're one fourth in scale, either one third or one fourth in scale of the big ones. Uh, I think it's one fourth. One fourth. Yeah. yeah. This Black Lives Matter situation, which is happening yeah. in the world, uh, that you're following up. Okay, I know that you're short of time. The last yeah. question, like, what is which? Sculpture is your favorite one and why? I get asked that question a lot. I never know how to answer. It's as if, Anataya, yeah. do, you have, do you have children? Uh, not yet. <laughs> okay. When you'll have uh, children um, and you have uh, one, two, or three, or four, people will say, you know, it's like saying, which is your favorite child? <laughs> so it's, it's, they're all my babies. Uh, of course, some sculptures, especially the, the latest the last ones it's like the uh that's the one that you're fond of but then you have the sculpture that represented something for you in that moment so i have quite a few i have i have i guess force of nature is one of my uh favorite pieces a hand of god uh gravity gravity which is there um gravity is my favorite force of nature uh and the love series of course Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't have one. I don't have a specific one. And uh, probably my favorite sculpture is the one that's still up here that I haven't made yet. Something in your head. So we are looking forward for new creations. Can't wait to 
to to see your new public art and thank, thank you so much for your time for showing around it was really thank you thing. thank and, you and, and hi to all and, and hi to all your uh, followers and uh, hope to see you guys soon yeah see you bye thank you ciao bye bye